A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, Stanley made a bevel-up plane. If you want to get into hand tools, you may have seen a lot of people saying, well, the one thing you have to get is you have to get a bevel-up low-angle jack plane. And then other people are like, no, 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 no. Stick with the traditional. A beveled down plane with a chip breaker. That's what you're going to want. Go with Bailey pattern plane. And you kind of wonder, which one's better? You really can't find a whole lot of the old Stanley bevel ups that are great. And the new ones like these can cost a pretty penny. Whereas you can buy one of these for like five, ten bucks at a garage sale um, if you're in the US. And uh, so which one's actually better? Which one will do the work you want it to do? First, let's actually talk about what is the difference between a bevel up and a bevel down plane. Now, a lot of people are gonna call this a low angle plane and this a high angle plane. And if you're talking about the bed angle, that is true. Uh, but there are other things that go into it that this may end up being a higher angle than this. And so I will refer to them as bevel up and bevel down. Now, what do I mean by bevel up and bevel down? Now, the iron inside, the actual iron that's cutting the wood has a bevel on it. So just like a knife edge. The question is whether or not that goes into the wood with the bevel facing up or does it go into the wood with the bevel facing down and uh, there's a lot of differences between the two and what they can do so with a bevel up plane what you can end up doing is you lower the bed angle so that this is all the way down low and you slide down through it now the nice thing about this is your force of push is more in line with the iron so that it pushes easier through the wood there is less chance of it chattering uh, whereas if you turn the bevel up your angle is much higher um, on the bed, and so when it slides through the wood, there's a tendency for it to chatter as it goes through the wood because the, the blade angle is at about 45 degrees, but the force angle is in line with the board, so there's a little bit of dis discrepancy between those. Another thing that comes up is on a bevel down plane, uh, the traditional Bailey pattern, you also have a chip breaker that can go on there. If it's on a bevel up plane, uh, you can't put a chip breaker on there because you have this angle. And so that can cause a little bit of difference. I'll go into that in a, bit, in a minute. So let's actually talk about the angles on the two planes. Number one, you may have heard me talking about the bed angle. That is the angle at which the actual iron piece is resting. So if this is resting at 12 degrees, as it is about on this low angle plane, so there's about 12 degrees of uh, lift up from the iron, then you have to add in the angle of the actual iron. So what did you grind this to? What did you sharpen this to? And in most cases, that's gonna be 25 degrees. And when you buy most of these, they come standard with a 25 degree iron. So if you have 12 degrees plus the 25 degrees, that's gonna give you 37 degrees. So in actuality, this has a cutting angle of 37 degrees. So let's move on to this. Now this one, the bevel flips down like that. And the nice thing about that is whatever your bed angle is, that's gonna be your cutting angle because your bevel's on the other side. So if your bed angle is 45 degrees, your cutting angle is gonna be 45 degrees. Now this particular one has a 45 degree frog on it. So it's a 45 degree cutting angle. Some of the Baileys um, came as low as 40 degrees. Some of them as high as 55 degrees. Um, and you can get other frogs that have different, uh, different angles on them. Um, I've seen them as low as 30 degrees. So you can get other angles on it. So if this one is at 45 degrees, and this one is at 37 degrees, uh, there isn't a huge amount of difference between the two. Eight degrees can cause a bit of a difference. Eight degrees is lower. Now one of the things I've come across a good bit is kind of a mental process difference between a power tool person and a hand tool person. A power tool person, when they pick up a chisel or an iron, um, has the bevel up and they do their work whether it's with a chisel they want to keep it in line or they want to keep it at a slight angle and uh, whether it's on a plane they want the bevel up or whether they're working with a chisel um, almost all applications they keep the bevel up and that makes sense because you want to keep the force in line with the iron itself so your force is going in the same direction as the iron but most hand tool people immediately flip it over 
and they want to have the bevel down. And the reason they want to do that is because it gives you uh, more control. It allows you to come and do a rounded cut into your surface. It allows you to put a chip breaker on it. Um, it's the most the way most traditional planes are at. It makes it a little bit simpler to think about the angle that you're working on. Um, and you can get down into things a little bit better with the bevel down. But those are a lot more options. There are other things to think about and there are more problems that can come about, come about because it's set up incorrectly. And uh, for that sake, um, most power tool people don't want to go into all of that. And so having the bevel up is very useful. Having the bevel down uh, gives you far more options, but it's more chances for things to go wrong. So that's another mindset thing that might come into play between a bevel up and a bevel down plane. So next up, I want to talk about three different uses for it. So different types of woods you may end up using. If you're planning on straight grain like this, um, coming along with the plane at this angle is perfectly fine because all the grains are rising and your plane is going to cut through it. But then you start getting into places like this where the grain might rise and fall. Um, and so you might be planing in the correct direction here, but on this side you want to be planing in this direction and they may switch up on you. So you have your uh, your figured woods, that would be this. And then you have your end grain. So what happens when you want to cut across the end grain? You want to actually plane off the board. And I want to kind of go through some of the different variances and where these different planes will shine. With a bevel up plane, you basically have two different options. You can get an iron that goes in here that is at 25 degrees, or you put an iron in here that's at 50 degrees. And for the most part, that's all the setup that's going to be on this. You sharpen it, you set it in, you make sure it's balanced up right, you put it at the right depth, and it cuts. It's very simple, it's very straightforward, and between those two blades, most of your cutting will go okay with this. Whereas you talk about a traditional plane, not only do you have uh, different angles of iron you can put in there, you have different setups for your chip breaker, you have different mouth, different distances, um, you have different settings in there uh, for a depth of cut and movement, and the movement of the mouth is different because you have to move the frog, whereas on this it's a very simple thing with the knob. Um, so there's a lot more intricacies that go into this that make it a little bit more difficult to set up in order to do different types of wood. So where does that come to play in the wood? If you're working with a straight grained wood, any of these planes will do perfectly fine. They will all shine, they will all cut exactly what you want. As long as the blade is on there correctly and they're set up well, they will do great. Now, one of the nice things about the low angle is it's a little easier to push through the wood. So when you're doing straight grains, this is nice. It is. Uh, it takes less force to put into it, and uh, that can be very useful. Whereas this, because it is a slightly higher bed angle, um, and there's more chance of it chattering, um, that can cause a little bit more force having to be put into the wood. Then you start getting into your figured wood, and this is where things start to get tricky. So you're going to want to switch this out. You don't want the low angle. You want to put a 50 degree blade in here. Now, when you have a 50 degree blade in here, that means your 50 degree plus your bed angle is gonna give you 62 degrees. So you have a 62 degree plane. Whereas on this one, you have the exact same iron in here because it's still at whatever your bed angle is. Changing the degree of the, of the angle on the iron is not going to change the degree of the cutting angle. So you start getting to the figured wood and having that higher 62 degree iron will allow you to do a lot more work. You're going to also want to close up your mouth very, very tight on this. And with those two things, you can usually avoid most tear out, but not all. And if you start getting into really figured woods, you, you can never make this really set up to do a glass smooth on figured woods. Whereas with this, there's another added benefit of having a chip breaker on top of the iron. And that chip breaker comes along, and as the iron goes through the wood, that chip breaker sets up here, so the wood pops up, and before it has a chance to split further, so as if the iron's coming in without chip breaker, it's just gonna to wanna to split out and you have this tear out in front of the iron. Having a closed mouth will allow you to stop some of that tear out, but you're still gonna get some tear out. The chip breaker actually forces the wood back into its place and will allow you to get a much cleaner cut. So with this, if you set your chip breaker up close and make your mouth small, you can go through any figured wood and get a butter smooth surface with a plane. It takes a while to set up and it is an artwork to learn to set up, but once you do, you can get an amazing surface with a bevel down plane. So when you're talking about figured wood, in my mind, this wins because it can do more, but it takes far more setup. If you don't wanna mess with the setup, then this may be your thing, and when you get to some of that really figured stuff, you just have to use a card scraper. 
Now let's talk about end grain. So when I'm cutting across the grain, all of this grain is coming out perfectly straight and I want to cut it all off. With this, the higher the angle, the harder it is because the higher the angle, the more your iron is just trying to catch it and push it out of the way. Whereas the lower you can make your angle, the more chance you're actually going to cut through all those fibers. And so a low angle plane is fantastic. Um, I have seen some planes uh, like these, they actually will lower the frog down to like 28 degrees. And so if you have a 25 degree um, iron on here, you're actually cutting at 28 degrees, which is an extremely low angle, and you can keep the chip breaker. But that means you have to have a whole new frog in here. Whereas with one of these with a 25 degree blade, you'll be making a 37 degree cut when the 37 degrees is lower than the 45. So this is going to be easier to push through end grain. So if you're doing things like end grain cutting boards, these are fantastic. They're great to have on hand. And in all honesty, the reason that Stanley made the original bevel up um, low angle jacks were for doing end grain cutting boards. Um, they are fantastic for resurfacing cutting boards and they really, really shine at that. Whereas you're going to have more problems with this. So where does that leave us? Which one is better? Well, to be honest, they both have their ups and downs. You're never going to have one plane that can do it all. You really need to have some that are better at other things and others that are better at uh, those few little things you want to use. So which one should you get? If you are first getting into hand tools and you have the money to spend, you might want to get a bevel up plane. They're simpler to use. There's less to set up. Um, they're kind of foolproof and uh, they push easier. And so that makes them a lot more friendly to someone who is new to hand tools. If you really want to get into hand tools though, and you want to learn a lot more of the intricacies, the bevel down plane may be the way to go. They're a lot harder to set up. There's a lot more ins and outs and they're really an art to learn. But once you learn it and master it, um, they become a pleasure to use. Now, if you're going to be doing a lot of ingrain cutting boards, you're going to want to bevel up plane. They're just fun. Um, your low angle can be very useful unless you end up getting a, an ultra low angle frog, um, in which case you might be doing some things with that, but then the chatter might get into the ingrain. Uh, so if I'm doing ingrain, it's the bevel up for me. But for most things, for me, it's the bevel down. Uh, so I like a traditional plane. I like the uh, learning to set things up. I like fiddling with it and making it exactly what I want. And I do a lot with figured woods. Very, very little of any of my wood is straight grained. Uh, almost every board I have is, is just knots and twists and the grain goes everywhere. And this just cannot handle that. It runs into issues, even with the 50 degree blade in there and a really tight mouth. Um, I'm still getting tear out and that just, that doesn't fit for me. Whereas when I set this up extra smooth and just the way I want it, I never get tear out with it. I mean, I can do the worst grain and still get a butter smooth surface and uh, that's where this can shine. So which one's better? Uh, no, they're, they're not one's better than the other. They just have different uses for different purposes. So you got to ask yourself, what are you going to use the plane for? What do you want to learn? And uh, that might tell you which one is better for you. So I hope you liked this video. I know it was a lot of information and I know that there are a lot of things that I left out and I could have added to this. Um, if you have questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to answer them directly. Uh, feel free to email me and contact me. I would love to answer that. I, I do have a lot of uh, personal belief between the two and I love both. They both have great uses, but uh, each one has a slightly different use and a slightly different need. If you did like this video, please hit like and think about subscribing. I do want to say an incredible thank you to the patrons on Patreon. Uh, you guys are phenomenal and are actually one of the reasons why I've done this. So uh, thank you for that and uh, keep up the great ideas. If you did like this video, you might find you like one of these others. And until next time, have a wonderful day.